Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's afternoon on the East Coast. Uh, good morning for our West Coast colleagues. Today, we are going to spend some time and talk about a little bit of, about what goes behind monitoring temperature in laboratory storage facilities for pharmaceutical labs and also some additional labs, whether you're looking at storing perishable products like food and other items, or if you're working in a laboratory for the EPA or such. Our presentation today is going to run the better part of 45 minutes, but we'll stay on a little longer if there are questions or other comments from the group. Before I get started, I want to let everybody know there are a couple of ways you can provide feedback during this webinar. We do have a chat function if you want to send a chat through to ask some questions. And we also have a questions portal uh, that I would recommend the group use if you have any questions as we're going along. I will do my best throughout the presentation to answer questions as they come in. And uh, what, if not, we can get to those at the end of the presentation. As I mentioned, it should take somewhere between 30 minutes for the presentation, uh, maybe a little bit longer depending on the questions that come in. So without further ado, let's get started and talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. So today we're going to talk a little bit about some temperature monitoring basics, specifically for these laboratory or storage environments. We'll talk a little bit about not just the, the data loggers themselves, but the sensor technology behind them, which is often uh, one of the most important things that go into data logging, but isn't often paid the attention to. We'll get a little bit into the calibration of loggers, uh, why we calibrate and some of the different types of calibrations that you can look at. And we'll briefly discuss some of the regulatory environments behind these, whether you're looking at good laboratory practices, uh, good distribution practices for the pharmaceutical world, or whether you're subject to requirements uh, from the CDC, for the Vaccine for Children's Program, and a little bit about some of the kind of secondary requirements, for instance, uh, uh, regulations for EPA labs and things of that nature. So, as we go through here, we'll get started. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the things we talked about in the beginning and how the onset in temp solution really helps bring all of those together and will make your life just a little bit easier. So, let's we're going to start with some temperature monitoring basics today, and really we're we're going to start are some common misconceptions, things that we get when people call us, they ask questions, things I've gotten when I've been out at conferences and other areas, and we'll talk through a little bit about those from an overview standpoint. So the first thing I get, and this is actually really prevalent in some of our, for some of our laboratory customers, but they, they come up to us and say, you know, we don't need a thermometer. I, I have a thermometer. I don't need a data logger. And one of the things that we're seeing in the industry, and this is specifically from a regulatory standpoint, uh, some of the 20, some of the 21 CFR requirements, some of the FDA requirements, and even down to some of the requirements in the EPA, EPA laboratories, are really driving towards needing a digital data logger to record data. It's not just good knowing what the minimum and maximum temperatures were in your laboratory space. You also need to know what happened throughout the day and be able to show a record of all of those. So what we're seeing, and one of the reasons why we're holding this webinar, is a lot of our customers, clients, and the people we're working with are making that transition from using a thermometer in the laboratory to using one of these newer digital data loggers. So the next thing uh, we hear a lot is that, you know, they're all the same. You know, all data loggers, thermometers, they all do the same thing. And what we'll get into later is that's not really the case. We're not necessarily saying one is better, one, or one is worse, but there are a number of underlying technologies that really drive how you use these, whether it's how often you need to calibrate your loggers, whether it's uh, you know what temperature or your ranges you're using it or the accuracy of those loggers. So they're not all the same. And you know, not only from a monitoring standpoint, but a feature and function set, some data loggers can put themselves, uh, make your lives easier in different ways and forms. So the third one, and this really kind of drives from the second bullet point is, you know, we get a lot of cu customers to call and say, I, I really don't want to deal with this. Give me the, you know, give, you know, give me something that's simple because monitoring temperature in my lab, in my storage facility, at my clinic, at my doctor's office, 
it takes time away from the work I should be doing. Uh, and I think that a misconception is that all data loggers do this, and that's not the case. A lot of the newer data loggers, some of the newer technologies in the market, you know, being a, maybe a wireless protocol, like some of the Intemp solutions, can really drive efficiencies in your process. They can take away the need to do manual steps, take away that step from a nurse or a laboratory tech, and really let them focus on the job they should be doing. And finally, uh, this is more for our laboratory customers and people who are in kind of that regulated space, but we do get the question, uh, you know, we have, you have a cloud-based technology, I can't use it because of the high cost of validation. And with these new technologies, when you're picking vendors and customers, there are ways to reduce the time and effort needed to validate, to test and to confirm that these systems are working. And that really speaks to the vendor's ability to provide you the correct documentation and an understanding of what those processes are. So as people are moving from thermometers, from older USB data loggers, or chart recording temperature devices, there are ways to do it quicker. Um, uh, there are ways to do it quicker and without putting burden on your validation groups. So what we'll move to next, um, is to talk about some of the basics that come in with uh, data loggers. And this, these are really things that you're gonna see across the board with any data logger company, our, ourselves here at Onset or really any other company. Data loggers have one core tenant. They provide you with a date, time, and temperature of the information that you're, that you're trying to record. And this is really the biggest difference between a data logger and a thermometer. A thermometer will give you a spot temperature. It might give you a minimum and maximum for the last 24 hours or for a deployment period. But digital data loggers really give you the ability to see what happens and trends over time. And this is especially valuable if you have products or test samples that are susceptible to damage for temperature adulteration, or if you need to, for instance, provide this data for filings with the FDA or filings for clinical trial type sites. The second thing is accuracy. Uh, we start with a minimum, temp a minimum accuracy of 0.5 degrees C plus or minus that comes from USB uh, guidance document 1118. But this is really kind of a core tenet of any data logger in the market. If you're working with something that doesn't have this accuracy level, then really you're looking at something that's not designed or robust enough for the laboratory environment. The next thing, traceability. Who did what, when? You know, this is one of the core tenants in most of the guidance documents, whether it's a CDC guidance document, an FDA guidance document. You need to know who's interacting with these data loggers, who saved the information when. And that really drives to 21 CFR Part 11 compliance. Uh, it's particularly important when you go to cloud-based or database solutions, but it's also important for some of uh, you know, traditional uh, logging devices. One of the biggest time consumptions we see from people who are moving from older technologies to newer ones is that they spend a lot of time documenting. You have to have somebody check your thermometers and data loggers twice daily, sign, date, and then save those logs. Traceability is important. Vendors with newer technologies can often make that easier for people as they're moving forward, but that's something to be considered. And the last thing is alarming or excursions. Uh, most data loggers have the ability to have at least a high and low alarm. And when you're looking at the technology, you should really think about how that uh, impacts you. Some people have a strict, for instance, two to eight alarm or 36 to 46 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit. Are you looking at alarming immediately? Are you looking at alarming over elapsed time? All of those come into play in laboratory spaces. And when we look at kind of some of the recommended things that are, could, or might have in systems, you specifically want to look at data loggers that have easily adjustable settings for alarm, interval, alarm intervals and limits. This gives the ability not just to monitor your current refrigerator, but make adjustments if you have product changes, if you're looking at new test samples or new items there. All of these things really do kind of play into effect. You do want a data logger that automatically reports your minimum and maximum temperatures, whether that's on the screen or on your uh, export. This helps with compliance, and this really does help with reducing the amount of time that you take in getting in your information to the people who need it. At Onset, we're a very big proponent of having centrally managed data. 
should be able to have a tool that keeps all of your data from all of your lab sites, different organizations in one place, keeps your training and organizational time down, and it gives you the ability to securely store that information in case that you have an audit or have to provide it to individuals. As we move into toward new data logger technologies, whether they're Bluetooth devices, like some of the onset devices we'll talk about later, Wi-Fi or even cellular devices, you want to make sure that you have good, good ability to export data, run reports, and of course enable text message and alert notifications. Uh, these are important, one for you know, helping you get in front of things, but for customers who are storing pharmaceuticals, they're really important to make sure that you don't have product loss. Getting a real-time alert or notification can save you hundreds of thousands of dollars rather than having to discard product in your refrigerators. And all of these things are really things that you need to take into account when you're, lot, you're monitoring a laboratory environment, a hospital clinic, or any other place where you have temperature-sensitive products. So the next thing we're going to talk about, and you know, given that we only have about 30 to 45 minutes here, I'm not going to dive into all of the in-depth details of the regulatory and compliance environment, but I think you'll see throughout this presentation when it comes to temperature monitoring, there are a number of different guidance and regulatory bodies, but they all really drive toward the same thing. In our laboratory space, specifically for FDA-managed laboratories, but also for EPA, uh, laboratories that are run perhaps by the DEC department, uh, they have good laboratory practices. They drive those requirements off USP 1079, which is a good distribution practice uh, guidance document and current good manufacturing procedures. A lot of the key drivers in the space are going to be record keeping, data integrity, and then uh, documented calibration and traceability. So making sure that your loggers are not only calibrated, but you have a record of what those are. For clinics, hospitals, vaccines for children's programs, similar, but they're run by a little bit different department. The US CDC provides a toolkit um, guidance document each individual state has their own management procedures and programs, but a lot of the drivers here are really individual state compliance and then making this as simple to use for your doctor's office clinics and pharmacies. One of the things we see specifically in this space is that people are often um, frustrated with having to put in new technology. They want things that are easier to use and they want technology that's going to make their life easier and take the work away from a clinic or an admin or a nurse and let them really work on trying to help their patients people are coming, that are coming in. The last area where we see a lot of regulatory spaces is the pharmaceutical storage industry, whether this is through a wholesaler's warehouse, whether this is perhaps maybe in the, uh, the uh, pre-production clinical part of this. You have FDA guidance documents, USP 1079, or in Europe, the GDP guidance documents. And really what we're seeing here are drivers, and again, similar to the laboratory storage, your data integrity, calibration traceability, but also corporate compliance. Uh, we often find that pharmaceutical companies and manufacturers go above and beyond what the regulatory body stay, stay, say is needed because it is, at the end of the day, their responsibility to make sure that drugs and pharmaceutical products that are taken by end patients are efficable and are in good working order. So uh, we're going to move on. I am going to uh, address one question that came in. We had a customer that came in and asked if uh, this presentation is being recorded. Yes, it is. We will be posting this to our website. So if you have questions or would like to review something later, we're, we'll be posting it on the Onset Comp website at the end of this presentation. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is a little bit around the sensor technology or the technology behind data loggers, which is very rarely talked about, but is actually really important to the crux of what you're doing with monitoring temperature. So the big misconception we get, and I get this all the time, is all data loggers are the same. You know, there's your company to company X to company Y to some older technology we might have in a laboratory now, they're all the same. And you know, that that really isn't the case. At the end of the day, there are really three different types of technologies that drive data loggers. There are thermocouples, which are, you know, you know, traditionally what people use in laboratory and testing environments. 
their thermistors, which are uh, what you see throughout, uh, I say, most commercially available data loggers. And then, of course, you have RTDs, which are, uh, are a little bit different technology, and you're starting to see those more and more in the commercial space. And what we're going to do is spend a few minutes talking about each one of those. Thermocouples. Thermocouples are, again, a traditional way to monitor temperature. Uh, they have wide temperature ranges. You can get different uh, thermocouple ratings for different temperature ratings from up to a couple hundred degrees Celsius all the way down to liquid nitrogen logging. They can be low cost. Although, depending on the, uh, what type of thermocouple you buy, they could be a little more expensive. And one of the nice things that they have here is you can actually go ahead and perform a calibration on a thermocouple and get very, very high accuracy over very short ranges, which uh, we'll talk about in a minute. There are a lot of the advantages to that. The cons with thermocouples is they're not great for long-term stability. If you were monitoring a refrigerator, for instance, over a couple of years, this is not the technology you'd want to use because they're prone to temperature drift. Thermistors, on the other hand, are, again, a low-cost technology, and they really do have great uh, stability over time. These are going are to be what you see in the majority of your refrigerator and freezer uh, data loggers. They're what we here use at Onset for our, our core uh, competency for our data loggers. You know, their one con is that they are limited in operating range. They're rated for ideally between negative 40 and four, uh, plus 40 degrees Celsius. That's great for monitoring refrigerators and freezers, but when you're trying to monitor a wider range of temperatures, if you're monitoring products that go down into dry ice or liquid nitrogen, or if you're trying to go up into uh, devices such as uh, high heat autoclaves, these aren't ideal, and if you're dealing with one type of data logger that just has a thermistor, you do limit yourself in the range. The last technology that we're going to talk about is probably the best uh, when it comes to range, accuracy, and stability, but it comes with a big con at cost. Uh, RTDs uh, are typically what you see being used for test equipment. Um, they have great stability over time but uh, they do have come at a higher cost. And because they often, um, you often need really a uh, higher number of wire leads or resistance comparison, and I won't go into the details there, but it requires a specific type of data logger or uh, back-end computer to run them. So thermocouples, uh, you know, I mentioned the, a couple of the pros and cons. These are really great for testing. If you're running a laboratory and you need to run a short-term test or maybe a very high accuracy validation study or something for a couple of days. Thermocouples are great. They can be calibrated for those high accuracies. They're not ideal for long-term deployments, but you can recalibrate them multiple times. And as I'll speak to in a few minutes, you can actually calibrate those and adjust the settings to make sure that they're very accurate at certain points. Thermistors, uh, I think, again, they're the bread and butter of the data logger industry. They're a cost-effective option. They work across most tem standard temperature ranges. But as you get into laboratories or storage environments where you're looking at, for instance, some newer technologies, cell gene therapies, where you have to go down to liquid nitrogen, uh, deep freeze applications where you're looking at a negative 80 degrees Celsius freezer, these aren't as ideal from a temperature standpoint. And in the laboratory space, they really just don't offer the wide range of, it, of um, wide range of monitoring that you need. And then, of course, you have your RTD probes, which are precise measurements over long-term uh, long deployments. Most of the data logger companies, ourselves included, actually use RTD probes as standards for calibration. We get high accurate probes to test our thermistor data loggers out in the field. And they're, you know, again, the really adva big advantage here is the wide temperature range. You can put RTDs all the way up into autoclaves, and then depending at the calibration point, all the way down to liquid nitrogen temperatures, which add value if you're in kind of those uh, testing laboratory spaces. So what we're going to talk to now is we're going to jump really into kind of, we talked about a little bit about the sensors themselves. Now we're going to talk about the calibration and this traceability. And I'm going to apologize here if we have anybody outside of the United States, somebody in Europe, 
Yeah, we're going to talk about NIST, which is the U.S. Uh, regulatory body. I'll talk and I'll talk a little bit about it later. But there are different regulatory bodies in different comp in different countries. They all do about the same thing. But uh, we'll, so we'll start here with NIST. What is NIST calibration? Uh, NIST calibration is the ability to check and or adjust a measurement against a nose standard with direct traceability back to a government uh, government standard. And a question I get, and I get this a lot, is, you know, what does that mean, translate that? Government organizations, NIST in the United States, uh, PDB in Germany, NPL in the United Kingdom, they have standards, essentially a laboratory that's government run that gives you, that give, tells you what measurements actually are, whether it's pressure weights, uh, temperature. And they actually maintain what one degree Celsius is, what zero degree Celsius is what one pound actually measures. And these laboratories keep these standards and allow people, people in the, in the industry to test their equipment, devices, or other items to those standards to make sure they're accurate. Uh, I equated to this, I think it's the best way to describe it. Back in the day, uh, a, the, a standard foot was the actual measurement of the king's foot. Nowadays, there's a laboratory in the United States, NIST runs, that can tell you exactly what one foot is point A to point B. So you can always go back and check the length of your ruler to make sure it's actually one foot long. We can do the same with temperature. And so when we talk about NIST calibration, it's checking to make sure that your data logger actually is monitoring what is uh, one degree Celsius. So, you know, the question that this leads into is, you know, you know, we get we have data loggers. Why don't why do we need calibration? And really, those different types of sensors that we talk about need calibration at different points because they can drift, they can be inaccurate. Whether it's through a manufacturing process, whether it's through uh, drift of the temperature sensor, which is something that happens, all of those things require people to uh, need to calibrate. Thermocouple technologies, as I mentioned, they actually require people to calibrate more often. You need to calibrate your thermocouple technology both pre and post use over those short term deployments. Thermistors uh, require yearly or multi year calibration, uh, depending on the way they're set up. And RTDs are about the same, although we do have people who are using RTDs in high end testing that are calibrating a little, a little more often. They're calibrating every six months to make sure there isn't drift and that they're uh, about as accurate as possible. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the type of calibration. Now, there are really two types of calibrations you see out in the industry. And we're going to talk a little bit about what they mean and why. And traditional logger calibrations, and this is what we perform here at Onset uh, for our data loggers we send out in the market, are really to confirm measurement. You're putting a temperature probe in to a, um, you're checking to make sure that it's zero. You're putting your data logger in, making sure it's also zero. And you're confirming that they're within that plus or minus 0.5 degrees spec. They don't change the core crux of how that thermistor or the technology in the data logger works. And this idea deal of linearity isn't an issue. That means that uh, you don't have to worry that the, that the accuracy of the sensor at one temperature is the same as the other. We, we test at different ranges. Calibration and adjustment is kind of the op opposite of that. You're checking to see if the sensor is accurate, and if it's not, then you're adjusting that sensor technology to the standard that you're testing it against to make sure that it's accurate. Uh, this does change the temperature curve, that linearity. So, for instance, if you're testing a logger at five degrees Celsius or temperature of a refrigerator, and your logger is off by a degree Celsius and you adjust that, the issue you run into there is that temperatures are not linear across the sensor. So you might be more accurate at five degrees Celsius, but you might be much, much, much less accurate at say 20 degrees Celsius room temperature or negative 10 degrees Celsius in a freezer. So when you're making the adjustment to a data logger, uh, you have to understand what that adjustment does to the sensor and across the line. And you need to make sure that the vendor you're choosing understands that. We at Onset for our data loggers tend to like to pick a sensor, whether it's an RSTD or a thermistor, that's accurate, that doesn't need those adjustments. 
So all we do are calibration. We make sure that when we produce something, it's accurate, we test it, and we provide it to our customers. We don't worry, we don't necessarily go through that adjustment phase. Some other customers do, or competitors do for that matter, but there are pros and cons to that. The reason why this matters, when you're picking a vendor, when you're talking to them about calibration, you need to understand what their calibration does to, the, uh, to that logger. When we put a logger out, we tend to put different ranges. We state an accuracy at the low end, the high end, and the mid and in the middle of different ranges. And we confirm via testing that our calibration is within those ranges at all of those different groups. If you're working with other loggers or other technologies and they're calibrated at a specific point, you need to understand what that does to the rest of the temperature range. And typically it makes it a little bit worse outside of that core range. So you need to understand that when you're looking at these data loggers. Last thing we're gonna talk about before we kind of go into the overview of the onset uh, solution is a little bit about the guide, a little bit more about the guidance documents that we're talking about here. Four guidance documents, the vaccine storage and handling toolkit put out by the CDC, 21 CFR part 58 for good laboratory practices or part 110 for CGMP or USB 1079 that I mentioned before or the EU. All of these documents really dictate how people should be monitoring temperature in these different spaces. And I could give a couple of hours presentation on some of the finer details of all of these things, but in general, all of these regulatory bodies really hit toward four main points. And these are really what you have to take into account when you're monitoring your laboratory environment. We talk about training. The people who are using these technologies need to understand it, they need to be trained on that. You need to have some semblance of quality control or risk management. You need to understand what you're monitoring, how sensitive it is, and why you're doing it. You need to have some part, a point of data integrity, meaning not only are you recording temperatures, but when you're saving that information, you have to confirm that it can't be adult, altered or changed. Saving, for instance, data in an Excel file isn't a great way to do that because if I don't like a temperature that I have in an Excel file, I can change it. PDF or secure databases are a much better way of doing that. And of course, when you're monitoring temperature, there needs to be accuracy. 0.5 degrees C really is what most of these regulatory bodies are looking for. Of course, in some laboratory spaces, when they're doing higher end testing, they might need a little bit better of an accuracy. And in those test cases, you might not look at a, a thermistor or an RTD, you might look at a thermocouple for those spot checks or those individual testing. So, it's really important to understand really what you're doing in your laboratory, be trained on and understanding the regulations when you're picking data loggers and starting to monitor the solutions in here. So that really takes us through the first part of my presentation. Uh, we're in about a half hour. We're gonna run, spend another 10 minutes or so talking about our intent monitoring solution. But before I do that, I want to take a minute. I want to open the open it up to questions. Are there any questions about what we just went through here? Some of the underlying technologies. Anything else I can tell you about uh, this space going forward? Uh, I'll I'll leave that open to the group for about a minute or two. So we're not seeing a lot of questions come through here. So what we're gonna do is spin the presentation over toward more of the commercial side and talk a little bit about how Onset's intent monitoring solution can really help you with some of these items. So our solution really comes into two parts. Uh, we have our data loggers, our CX400 storage monitoring loggers and our CX600 and 700 series, which are our lower temp uh, data logger solutions as well as the, the, the suite of technology around that, including our mobile application, our Intemp Connect database and analytics tool, and our CX Gateway automation tool. And I'll, I'll go into some of the details of each of those right now. Um, 
the first thing we're going to talk about is our CX402 data logger because it really is the crux of our solution. It's the first product we brought to market. It's our best selling and most widely used product for a number of different reasons. And the first thing I'll talk about is that these are Bluetooth data loggers, meaning that these aren't connected to your computer via, via uh, wires. You don't have to remove them off your refrigerator to download them, whether re daily, weekly, or monthly. You, using a smartphone tablet, uh, a smartphone or tablet can actually download the information from the loggers directly and put that information either into an Excel PDF or into our secure cloud-enabled uh, cloud database. Talking to the technology we mentioned earlier, these really are these are thermistor uh, data loggers. So they're rated for your refrigerators, freezers from negative 40 degrees up to 40 degrees Celsius. And we have a number of different options here. All of them have large LCDs with feedback icons. They have audible and visual alarms. So if there is an issue with, them, with the logger, you can be alerted to that. And we have three different options here. So you know, the top logger we have up top is our CX403 data logger. That's designed for uh, room temperature monitoring, walk-in freezers, walk-in refrigerators, uh, be put up on the wall. And then we have two probed versions under that. A uh, probe with a buffered solution, a glycol bottle. Uh, and those are for laboratories that want, or clinics and hospitals that require a buffering solution or non-buffered solutions where you really need that, act, that high level of accuracy for their, um, their loggers. These are uh, great for really any application you're working at, whether it's a laboratory, doctor's office, or clinic. Uh, our loggers have a number of pretty cool features with our mobile application. You can actually go in, uh, for people who have, to man who have to check these every day, we display the daily minimum and maximum temperature right on the screen. Uh, they, we actually have an feature in our application that allows you to perform your daily checks electronically so you can keep a record of that and do it from your mobile device within range. And one of the my favorite features about this, and this speaks to kind of our calibration, is we at Onset are actually launching our recalibration, a recalibration program this month for both our VFC line of data loggers and our standard uh, 402 loggers. In that case, for people who need continuous monitoring and don't want to have to deal with the hassles of yearly calibration, we'll actually send out uh, recalibrated loggers to you proactively with a pre-addressed return mailer so you can get your new logger at your one or three year interval, put it up in your fridge, and then send the old one back to us for a factory refurbishment so you don't have any downtime for your data loggers. And this is something that we're uh, really excited to launch and really does help people who need to go through those recalibration processes on a regular basis. So moving on to the uh, moving on to the next uh, loggers is our CX600 and CX700 series data loggers. And these are actually our RTD probe technology. So we, are, we brought these to market to help monitor some of those lower temperature uh, applications. Our CX600 series is designed for dry ice or deep freezer applications. It's rated down to negative 95 degrees Celsius. And what we have to market with our CX700 is actually a cryogenic logger. And this is something we really like. Uh, this is a uh, device that can actually be placed in liquid nitrogen in a door, so in a laboratory space, or working with a product that um, uh, working with a product that is needs to be kept at negative 200 degrees C, this probe can be kept with it to give you an accurate temperature reading throughout its storage uh, location. Like our CX400 loggers, these come with NIST calibration included. It's a one and a half meter non-detachable probe. So while this doesn't have the LCD that you have with this, these are really kind of designed to be monitored in those freezers using our Bluetooth mobile application to get your information off of it. And these devices are uh, designed for one year use and due to the low cost nature of these, rather than sending them out for recalibration every year, it's more cost effective just to swap and get a new logger at the end of each year. And that's really why we designed these to be a lower cost type of solution. The next device that I'm gonna talk about is really the last hardware device that kind of pulls these two together. And this is our CX Gateway. As I mentioned before, our loggers are Bluetooth, meaning you, like a headset or other Bluetooth device, you need to use a mobile, mobile phone to monitor, set them up, and manage them. This gateway device that we offer 
can be can be put in range of our data logger and it really automates all of that process. This gateway can be used to do your, can be set up to automatically download your devices on a weekly basis or, and this is the really important part, when there's an alarm. And with our cloud environment, you can actually set these gateways up to send you alarm excursions when you're not in the office via text or email. So over the weekend, if you're running, or in the evening, if you're running a test or a design in a laboratory, or if you have a lot of temperature sensitive products in a refrigerator, this can let you know when there is an issue without having to, uh, without having to have a big expensive automated system in without any additional fees for alerting and notifications, which we have found has been a pretty successful uh, piece of our solution. That kind of really sums up our hardware part of our solution. The other two pieces that we have here, the first one is our Intent mobile application. Uh, it's a free app that you can find on the Apple's, uh, Apple Store, Google Play Store. And this is what you'd use to monitor your devices. You can manage all of your loggers in range. You can connect, configure, and download your loggers. And the nice thing about this app, just like our gateway, when you download data, uh, data, it can be automatically pushed to our cloud solution, which is really the central hub of our monitoring solution where we get a lot of value for that. Talking about that really quickly, uh, I can't stress this enough. All of our software is free that comes, within our, comes with our product. Uh, it's free, secure cloud database. We have customizable user access. You can put as many users into the system as you want. So if you have, for instance, multiple laboratories, maybe in one building or multiple buildings, you can use a central database and give access to all of your laboratory staff and have all of your data in one place. Uh, we have a great uh, intuitive alert and notification system for both logger downloads and when there are alarms. We have a, a search integration tool with an analytics engine. And as I mentioned, this is a validated 21 CFR part 11 system. So you can use it within the regulatory bodies that you're going with. We did have a question that came through I want to address here. I think it's the right point. Uh, we, do, uh, we do have validation packs that we have inside for our indiv individual um, systems. For people who need to do IQ, OQ, PQ testing of this system, we have a product team. You can reach out to me directly or to our tech support staff. We're more than happy to help people set up uh, that documentation for them. Uh, we don't provide stock documentation, and the reason we don't is most individual companies we're dealing with have their own specific IQ, OQ, PQ documentation, and we're happy to help adjust and work with people to make sure that they have the right documentation when they're validating the system. So going through here, I wanted to take a quite uh, uh, before I go into a couple of other things. So the last thing with our system, you know, these really do work as an integrated system. The loggers, the app, the gateways, the cloud, they are an integrated system, which is really nice. The validation documents we can provide for this. really do a nice pull all that together and describe all the details of how these work together. This is a low cost monitor solution. Our CX400 loggers start at $149 and our CX6 and 700 series start in the, one, uh, the $145 range. And outside of buying the hardware themselves, there's no additional cost. There's no cost for the alerts, the notification, the fees. So this really is something for people who want to buy a system, set it up and leave it and not deal with recurring costs. This is a really nice way to go about it. As I mentioned before, the way that we set up our documentation and the ease of use with our system using mobile applications, which most people are used to using, they're great for laboratories, hospital clinics, or the pharmaceutical supply chain. I know we do have a couple of people here who are also in the perishable storage type of uh, application, so that'd be food storage. Works great for that as well. The way you can set up alarms and systems and different temperature limits, you can set them up just like you would for refrigerator for pharmaceutical products. You can set it up for shipping produce, berries, meat, or other items as well. The last thing with our system is, of course, you know, with our gateway, 
um, you can really enable those real-time excursion notifications and centralized storage. So you have all of your information in one place. You can set up alerts through an email or text notification uh, with our Bluetooth wireless gateway, and it really helps you control your risk and control your processes in your labs or other areas. So for the laboratory space, again, it's centralized monitoring, real-time notifications and compliance. That easy-to-use smartphone app means you can roll it out across multiple labs without the cost or uh, time of additional training. And this is really nice for uh, laboratory spaces that are working with clean rooms or restricted areas. Because they're wireless technology, you can have access to your data without having to gown up and go in that clean room to get information out. And with the gateways themselves, they actually have system alerts. So if there is an issue where the power outage is going down or something going down when you're not there, not only do you have information for a temperature alert, but you also get alerts if there's a system downtime error. For hospitals, VFCs, and clinics, uh, again, because of the ease of use of things, it's great to roll out for central management or through single sites. The audible or visual alarms are, uh, help make these fully compliant with CDC state VFC guidelines. For our, our VFC line of data loggers, we actually have a sensor that's accurate enough to offer a three-year NIST calibration with that proactive recalibration program. So you buy a logger that's good through, through three years. Three years in, we can all, uh, run you through that calibration program. So you really have six years of life with that logger without having to worry about any type of downtime or other issues with that. The real-time alarm notifications, especially for smaller clinics, help you reduce risk. And that autonomous system alert when there's power outage can really help kind of get in front of issues before they happen. Finally, for our pharmaceutical supply chain, or really perishable supply chain as well, uh, we have the ability to pair the storage data with transportation data. We have another line of temperature loggers that are designed from really monitoring point A to point B in logistics. So you can have one system that can manage all of that. For people in the supply chain, we can integrate this into ERP or building management systems. So if you want to not only use our Intem Connect cloud solution, but also integrate it in with your own BMS system, we can do that. With our alerts and notifications, we can help automate data, getting it to quality or decision makers in the event of an excursion. And because of our ability to provide validation documentation and have all of the information, um, you can set up those uh, set up these downtime alerts to get away from everything. So, really, that takes us down to the end of our presentation. Uh, it took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but in conclusion, you know, it's somewhat of an easy to use system. Uh, it's a low cost, scalable technology. So whether you're one clinic multiple labs or a larger supply chain can really scales top to bottom. We have a great data repository and analytics term. And for whether it's clinical, consumer, laboratory, it's great across all of those different areas. We at Onset have been around for the better part of 36 years. We're a global leader in data logger technologies for ISO 9001 lean manufacturing operation. And uh, I think a lot of you are familiar with our uh, brand of data loggers, but what we talked about today is our intent monitoring solution, which is really designed, um, designed around this. So what I'm going to do is we're starting to have some questions come in. I'm going to take a minute, look through those, and we'll spend the, ne the next 15 minutes or so answering those as, as needed. First question that we came through. So the question that we was asked was, please explain the power outage alert. Is an alert sent with power is lost or is power is restored? What we send with our system is an outage of when our gateway goes down. And it's both when the gateway loses power and if it's been restored. So if the gateway goes offline, whether it's a loss of Wi-Fi or Ethernet, whether or it's loss of power, our system automatically sends an alert out an hour after that went down, so you can go and start to take uh, take um, action in that. We give an hour just so if you have a Wi-Fi outage for 10 minutes, you don't um, have any issues. If power Wi-Fi Ethernet is restored, we send another alert notification out to show you when that system is back online. So.
Uh, we do have another question that came through about the recalibration. Our recalibration program that we run after three years is about a $75 cost for that proactive solution. So that goes through. Now, one of the things that we did come through, somebody mentioned uh, that three years of calibration. The CDC handbook allows for two years of calibration or by manufacturer uh, recommendation. And we have all of our documentation and information available that shows that our loggers are accurate for up to three years. So for most states, that is completely acceptable to use. There are some that have different regulations out there, but uh, the majority of our customers in the VFC space are using that calibration for three years. Uh, we had a question, how can I learn about the recalibration program? In the next couple of weeks, you're actually, uh, everybody who's on this webinar and uh, in our, our um, alert database is going to get a notification that will explain the details of that calibration service. But the long or the short of it is, you'll go online, uh, put in the, the serial number of your existing logger, we send a new one out to you, you can install the new one, send the old one back to us with a pre-HS return mailer, and then we set that up, clean it up, run it through a recalibration refurbishment process, and have that ready to go. So, one thing I will mention, we have had a couple of customers who have called in and asked about existing systems that they have up and running. Uh, I just want to make note that I, I have, do have these questions, and for those existing customers that have things up and running, I'm going to reach out to you guys after the webinar and uh, get into the specifics about your uh, your individual case. So one, one other question came in, is there a way to alter the, the, the time the gateway power loss alert comes out? No, there isn't. We, we do that for one hour uh, right off the bat. Uh, but the one thing to note is our data loggers, because they are battery powered, AAA battery, uh, they continue to log temperature throughout the process. So if there is an alert during a downtime, as soon as that comes back up, you can see the temperature that's in, in the facility at the time. So that helps. I'm looking to see, I'm not seeing any other questions come through. Is there anything else that I can, um, uh, is there anything else I can answer uh, for the group here? So I did get one other question. Uh, if there are questions after this webinar, if you need to reach out, uh, you'll see on my screen, uh, Paul Delavilla onsetcomp.com is my personal email address. You can also go to our website and uh, go through our resource, uh, resource portal if you want to reach out to our technical support or sales group. And we'll be happy to add, answer questions about this. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, uh, we are going to be we are recording this and we will be posting it online if you want to go back and view it or if you have for instance, colleagues that might have questions about this. Are there any other questions from the group? Uh, 
So I had one other question. They're asked, is there, are there any repeater or range extender options for our gateway? No, there aren't, but our gateway um, has a number of features and functions that are coming out. And due to the low cost of the gateway, we recommend uh, setting a couple of gateways up in larger areas. Uh, the gateways themselves have about a 100 feet or 30 meter of line of sight range. And for larger facilities, putting up multiple gateways in range should be how you'd address that. I want to thank everybody for their time here. Uh, I appreciate everybody spending the uh, better part of 50 minutes listening to me talk. Uh, I hope it was informative. Again, uh, you can see the information on our screen on how to get in touch with us if you have any other questions. Uh, I appreciate the time and everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.